we going everybody? Hope you had a good weekend. Now we're going to go back into the pruning again because we spoke about uh, pruning fruit trees in summertime. I showed you the apricot. I've shown you our Asian pear, which is just over here. We've cut that back down, but I had a lot of emails come through. Uh, people saying, well, their trees aren't growing straight up and down. This one's sort of growing outwards a little bit like that, but most of the trees aren't growing up. A lot of people have got trees that are opened up. So I thought, let's get on to the nectarines. And I'm actually going to go through each tree, not today. Today, we're only going to do the one behind me. Tomorrow or the next day, we're actually going to do this pear tree. Uh, this is a Pakenham uh, pear. And then we're going to do the Williams pear over there also, which has got a bit of upright growth on it. And to the right is an Asian pear as well. Now, don't mind the noise in the background. We've got a couple of bikes running around in the paddocks there. Not our bikes, that is. So let's get back into this. This is going to get cut right down. I cut this down about, well, a year ago, in actual fact, just under a year ago, and I had it at five, six foot high quite comfortably. That's how fast it grows. In one year, it's almost doubled in size. Again, we're just going to bring it down to arm's reach. For example, all here, I don't want this up there anymore. You can see it was cut over here. I think it was over here. So I'm going to cut it back down to here for now. Just take this off completely, like that. And I'm going to work my way around and bring the height down. Then we're going to thin it out a little bit, if we can. So just go in here, wherever I can reach. And the thing is, if I don't bring it down, folks, when you print a plant down, always print it back smaller than what you want it to be. So if you want it to grow to five foot high, cut it down to four foot or maybe even lower, three and a half foot, 90 centimetres, one metre, if you want it to grow one and a half metres. I want this to grow to two, two and a half metres maximum. If I cut it back down to two and a half metres, then let it grow, it's going to get past this. So I have to bring this right down. This is way too high at the moment. I did cut that one off, didn't I? So cut that there. This is new growth. Now, I can leave this here to mature for next year. Hopefully we get fruit on that. Otherwise, I'm gonna take it right back again. I don't want it because I'm gonna have it too high. I don't wanna harvest that high. I want all the growth to come on these ones down here. Dogs are barking, don't know why. What's wrong? Settle down. But you know what I'm seeing here? If I take a moment, let's go back a bit. Let's have a look at this properly. You can see all the growth up there. See so all this from here up, all that, that's all got to come off. All this branching here is beautiful. I love that. Even that's not too bad, but this branch here, these branches in there, that there, all the ones at the back there, I'm just going to take them right off from the base, meaning from here. Not bad, eh? The low is number one. About the best anvil pruners you can buy, folks. Now this isn't really that severe folks, I mean I haven't even cut half the tree down yet. I'm just going to take that off. See the problem we have here, there's still a lot of foliage on so we really can't go in there and clean it up properly. What we're doing is just taking the height down. Don't worry about the overlapping so much. If you can get into it a little bit, that's okay, but you can do that later in winter when the tree drops all its leaves. All these wispy branches have to be cut back. I can go around and just nip them off like that for now, but these won't have that much effect if I do it now or even in winter. If you want to, just to clean it up and you've got the time, by all means, but it's quite a safe and okay to do it in the winter time as well. Now this tree produced its fruit and we harvested in January. We're into February now. I could have cut this back about a month ago, but that's okay. It was still putting on some summer growth. Now, I know it's not going to put as much growth on now, so that's why I'm cutting it back as hard now rather than earlier on, because after you do a prune, it generally goes into growth spurts. So if you cut it back a little bit too early in the season, it'll pull up, put on a lot of new upright growth again, and then you're back to square one. Now it's not too bad. You know what I just cut off there? I've just noticed that we've got a sucker coming out from the bottom. This thing here, this thing here, look at that height, look at the height of that. Three metres, four metres tall, it's coming out from the base. Just realise that. Where is it? Down there. I've got to work on this little sucker down here, but folks, if you see them coming up out of the ground, get rid of them straight away. Don't leave them on there because all they're doing is taking the energy away from the tree above that's grafted 
and putting the energy back into the rootstock because it's a sucker from the rootstock. It's its own variety, a wild variety. It could be anything really. And at the end of the day, it's not going to produce the fruit that you're expecting. See all this down here? Dead, disease, damaged wood. All that's got to come off as well. Now you can do it now if you can get access to it like I am, or you can wait till winter and clean all that up. And that's the best time to do all the dead, disease, damaged wood, which is overlapping, crossing and broken and, you know, all the stuff that's going wrong with it. That's the best time to actually clean it in winter. See, because you can't see what you're doing in here. But at the moment, all we're doing is bringing the height down. And the first thing that could probably come to your mind is that, how do you know if it's dead, disease, or damaged wood and not viable wood in winter when it's dormant and there are no leaves on it. It's quite simple. See that? Discoloured brown, brittle, that's dead. See that? Green, live, succulent and even in winter it'll still hold its colour. Soft, very soft and pliable because there's moisture going through it. Whereas that, it's dead. So that's what you're going to see. It's not going to be any different. You're going to see that dead wood and it's darkened off, blackened off, dark brown. Look even here. Look at this. See, that's brown there and here, damaged. That there, broken. So you'll notice it quite easily. If you're not sure, you're not going to do anything bad to the tree at the end of the day. If you cut one too many branches because you thought it was dead and it wasn't, well, it's just going to grow back. Look how fast they grow. Better? Opened it up. Still a bit of work on it. Still a lot of work on it, folks, because look, come inside here. You can't see it all from out there. Look at this. Look at all these, look at these branches. See here? That's dead dead damaged branch there. Look weird branches growing from all sorts of angles, all that sort of stuff. All that's got to come off. You don't need that sort of stuff hanging around. You want a nice clean branch. You've got some sides coming up there. Like that, yes, but you want it to be neat. And you don't want it to grow too long because it becomes wispy. So we cut all these back. See that? If I don't cut that back there, it's growing from there. It's already about 60 centimetres, 70 centimetres long. Cut it back again here. Take the tips off if you like. Stops it from growing out too long and becoming lanky. We've brought it down. Open vase shape, lots of sunlight, a nice balanced structure of the tree. You know, it's not going to be the best looking tree all the time. Sometimes you don't get it right with the pruning or the tree grows a little bit out of shape. As long as you can balance it out and just control it and make sure you've got plenty of sunlight in the middle because that's the key to it. And don't take off all the older branches underneath because that's where your fruit's going to come from. All this should start to bear fruit for me next year. And at the end of the day, you give it a go. It grows one day, you cut it back too much, it'll grow back the next day. Well, not quite the next day, it might take a year or so. So look after your trees, go out there and prune your nectarine and peaches. And if you are going to fertilise, fertilise your citrus. These trees are going into dormancy, you don't want to give them a high nitrogen fertiliser now, because you're just going to put them into a crazy mode, they're not going to know what they're doing anymore, they're going to start growing again. So don't over fertilise them, just maybe a light compost at the moment. But if you want to feed something and you're excited, get out to your citrus trees, because they've got lots of fruit that needs to start ripening now as we go into the cooler months. EK Butch Liquid Gold and Black Grit, the trifecta, is what you need around all your garden. Check it all out on our website, vasilisgarden.com. From here, Vasili, Maresi. Look, it's just turned up. Hello. How are you going? Hey, hey. <laughs> He's a good boy.